Welcome. Um, what we're going to do here today is go through the exams. So, first thing you want to know is, well, where are the exams located? They're located in the units. So, each unit, uh, this one, is, you're going to see the units here. There's going to be a total of three units. This is in a class that's yet to be developed, so it's not going to be representative of what you're going to see. But nonetheless, there will be another unit underneath US, uh, Unit 2 here. So, let's look at... This is the first that exam you're going to take, it's going to be the uh, orientation exam. So click there. Uh, let's open up the syllabus. Opening up the syllabus. The reason why I want you to open up the syllabus is uh, that is where the lockdown browser software is located. So you're going to click that, open that, and then click install, which you'll see. Click that. I'm not going to... Well, too late. <laughs> it did it automatically. You'll click that, and either uh, I'm using Chrome, so in Chrome on the PC, the the downloads conveniently go here. On other browsers, you might have to go to the folder, so you've got to find wherever your search window is for your particular machine. Uh, so here, it's located right there, and then or you can go directly uh, to to the desktop to search for it. Um, once it's downloaded, uh, you're going to see a, a browser that looks like this. And you're going to click this, and you're going to click Run. When it does that, and you're going to open it up. And unfortunately, I have a computer that is restricted. I'm in the process of getting that restriction lifted. Uh, it, I, I, cannot, I, I have to have administration rights to, to get through, but I, so I don't. So anyway, um, once it's downloaded properly, uh, what you want to do is log in like you would normally to Blackboard. It'll basically open up to the Blackboard login page. And you just log in with your username and password like normally and go from there. Okay, so once you're there, let's go back to the class. Here we go. Uh, you're going to go, you're going to watch the videos. Don't skip this. Some students skip this because they think they're saving time. They're not saving time. They're going to probably have to do the exam more times than necessary. You might have to do the exam more than once. Uh, maybe not, though. If, if you do, if you use the orientation study guide as intended, again, I got that right there. Study guide's right here. All right, let me highlight it right there for you. And then this page opens up here. You click here. And boom, it opens up. Have this printed out. Have it right in front of you. I would take the time to put a few spaces in between each question. Print it out and then have a get yourself a pen. Write down the responses uh, if you can. If you have another computer device, you can type away as you're watching the video on another device. So if you have a mobile and you're watching it, by the way, just to reiterate, I don't recommend using the mo doing most of the work that you'll do, like exams, reading the material, whatnot, on a mobile device. It's not laid out the same as it is on a PC um, or a Mac. All right, so uh, be warned about that. You can still do it on a on a mobile device. It's, it's you'll just have to know what to look for more so. So, but anyway, have the questions in front of you. Once you're done watching the videos, and the videos are located right here underneath, orientation videos. And there we go, orientation videos, that's where I went, right there, let me highlight it for you, boom, boom. So there is one, two, three, four, five videos to watch, uh, maybe up to six, I might have to put exams into uh, a part one, part two, hopefully not. But anyway, you want to watch these videos, and, and this just applies to the exams, the exam for the orientation is a little bit different for the units, and I'll briefly go through that quickly. So watch each video with the orientation uh, little study guide with you right in front of you. All right, go through all of these uh, in kind. I know it's a pain in the butt. I admit that up front. I would find it a pain in the butt if I was in your position at first. Once you go through the process, though, you you will uh, appreciate it though because you will understand the expectations of the course and how it's laid out. 
there's just no way of making it a seamless thing to where you realize the, the number one uh, pitfall for internet students is that they assume they understand the expectations when in fact the expectations are not laid out um, the, the expectations are not mapped in the mind as they are intended here right and so assumptions are very dangerous you want to make sure you understand specifically and that is what that study guide is intended to do so watch the video remember it has a pause button so sometimes I'll get uh, videos and immediately so I talk really fast right just kidding uh, I talk fast probably right uh, and that might actually be a different perception than somebody who's familiar with an internet course but if you're not familiar with an internet course it does it might seem that I'm talking too fast however I'm not I'm an artifact right uh, this is not a live event this is a recorded event in the orientation for your oh you are speaking too fast I push pause right uh, and I would also recommend right here see this little thing right here I'm pointing to click YouTube so it opens up in a separate window that way it's a little bit bigger for you and so you can see a little bit more of what exactly I'm pointing to um, okay now you're ready to take the exam the exam there we go will not open up if uh, and you're gonna it's kind of right here this is a flaw of blackboard if I could fix it I would but it's right there see open orientation exam here you gotta look for it this is why mobile devices are a little bit problematic it's hard to see some of that sometimes open it up and away you go now I'm not in lockdown browser right now I'm having to work in a different classroom shell uh, that doesn't have lockdown browser because I don't have administration rights <laughs> and so if if I had a, a, a lockdown on this exam, what you would see is a space for a password. Listen to this closely. You don't need a password if, if you are opening it up, if you're opening up Blackboard in lockdown browser, right? So you'll click begin. There we go. Error. I don't know. Oh, the test can. Okay, this contains no questions at this point because it's a developing course. But that's where the questions would be. You would open it up, and there would just be a, one question per window. And there would be a um, down here. There would be a place where you would click uh, submit, and it would open up the next question. Right? Might prompt you. Are you sure you want the next question? That kind of a thing. Um, but maybe not. Okay. Real quick, let me just show you where Unit One exam is located. And I'm yes. So what you're going to do for each lecture, beginning with uh, reconstruction. Hold on a second. Let me go over here so you can see it the way you, you actually probably will see it. Uh, there we go. So yeah, this is this is how this is the class that you'll actually be working with. So let me open up June 4th to June 27th. Unit one, race, gender, and reform. Remember, each unit is thematical it's not chronological and the reason for that is incredibly important it's easy to lose sight when you go chronologically of the themes the importance the connections so the civil rights the uh, reconstruction happened yes in 1860 which is moving on to about 120 years 140 years um, from now right I'm doing the math real quick uh, in my head which is a problem um, it's the connection there, there is a continuum um, between Reconstruction and the civil civil rights movement. The civil rights movement is not happening in a vacuum. It's happening within the context of the events that happened during the Reconstruction era. The people that uh, enacted laws, the people that died, the people uh, as a result of violence from white supremacy, the fact of white supremacy also. Uh, directly affect and make possible the events that happened during the civil rights movement and that's very easy to lose sight of if you're not familiar with US history and as a student obviously you're not familiar with US history uh, maybe some maybe some of you are that would be great let me know if you are but if you're not familiar with it totally understandable right so that's why I want to make the connections very clear by making it thematical All right so there you go you're gonna click there 
And the, always it opens up on the schedule, so make sure you reference that so it gives you an idea of when things actually expire. I use the word expire, not do, quite purposely because, as it's noted right here, all assignments and exams are open and now and open now and can be completed as soon as you are prepared as your instructor. That's me. I encourage you to submit assignments early and begin the exams before the expiration date. I guarantee you, if you wait until the day an exam expires, ah, that is exactly when things go wrong. I get uh, at least five or six emails the next day explaining um, uh, to me how things went wrong. Now, if you haven't read on the syllabus, there is a process if, if that happens to you. I, I don't allow makeups, but what happens is that exam two that you take will also ask you questions from exam one. Right? It'll ask you essay questions from exam one, lecture essays. Uh, the exact same ones, right? No difference. So you prepare. If you didn't prepare for the, ex the exam one, or if you did prepare for them, those are the ones that you want to prepare for, as well as the the stuff from unit two. Um, so, since that's the case, what I do is I uh, let's say you earn a ninety-five percent on exam two. I take that score minus ten percent and apply it to exam one. So exam one goes from a zero to an eighty-five. Right? Excellent. So make sure you understand that. Uh, it, it'll be helpful in the future, perhaps. Um, maybe not, but it's good to know that it's there. Okay, so when you're ready to take the exam, the exam is going to be located down here. And again, it's, it, it'll be right under the Unit 1 Current Event History Discussion. Uh, it'll be outside the uh, line for the folders. So. When you're ready to take the exam, you'll click there. Again, this class is still being developed. This, this is about a week before the semester starts. Um, we, I have to wait till tomorrow until I'm able to upload videos to this particular shelf. Uh, OK, I think that's it. Uh, what I will be sending through Sally uh, and the announcements is, a, it, it, our study tips. Um, so. Real quick, what, use these. If you're familiar with these, great. Proceed as, as, as you're familiar with these. If you're not, what you want to do is you want to write down the learning objectives. Each lecture comes with learning objectives. Yahoo, isn't that great? Uh, what that is, is a ch it chunks out the exam, right? The, the content for the exam. So instead of taking it all at once, you just look at the dates and go by the dates. If at all possible, try to do it early. I recommend that. But if not, you have this as a guideline. Just make sure you stick to it. This right here, discuss the two constitutional theories that evolve around the question of reconstruction. You'll click there and shabam, it opens on up. All right. So it opens up. You could print this out. I highly recommend doing it. Go ahead and print. Um, but that, that right there, write that on one side of this, and then as you take notes, as you're reading through this and watching the video, and then on the other side, write down a few bullet points that help you, that enable you to uh, remember, uh, bring to the forefront of your mind the, the response, the, the specifics of the response. You don't want to overload the back of this because that will just, that, that'll It'll make it very difficult to memorize, right? And so, if this doesn't work, well, if you if you look at the on this side, if you look at the learning objective and nothing comes to mind, that's an indication. Okay, I need to go back to that one. But you go to learning objective two. Here it is. You go to learning objective two in. Um, there we go. It's going to open on up. Is it going to get there? That, hold on. So technical difficulty, it's not opening up. This is internet related. It should be opening up, but it's not. So this is stuff you want to anticipate in an internet course. It doesn't always work the way it's supposed to work. 
very frustrating. But if you anticipate it, which means you work ahead of time, you allow yourself to go, okay, well, that's not working. Maybe I could work ahead. It's okay if you, if you work ahead. So if you go to the Civil Rights Movement, um, if that works, maybe it doesn't. Um, uh, but this is why you'll want to, it, when it does work, and it usually does work, it's not, um, it's just right now in, in this particular setting, I'm having, it's probably related to the storm that's happening right now. Um, the internet's not working uh, correctly. It's not moving from one window to the other. Uh, but what it does, uh, print out the documents, right? So you have them ahead of time. You don't want to be in a position to where because the technology is not working, you don't have access to it, right? And so that's the kind of the cost of, of not having a, a, a textbook. The benefit, though, is that it doesn't cost $80 to $120. So even if you're a financial aid student like I was, um, I'm sure you could use that money for other things, right? So, and, um, but anyway, that's it. Uh, I'm going to get out of here. I, gosh, I already spent way too much time on this. Maybe I'll, I'll split this up in uh, a couple of parts. Okay. Toodaloo.